So we've come to look at the um, McLaren here. Um, the, I, I know you're thinking this isn't very hub nut, but if you take in the windscreen wiper of this McLaren, I think you'll be impressed. Oh, look at that, beautiful. That's a grab action. Might as well go and have a listen round the back while we're at it. taken by the uh, McLaren but I don't think he'll be buying one just yet he's gonna have to stick to the mighty Dacia but yeah we're here at classic nostalgia at Shelsley Walsh we are guests of Stratstone and um, looking forward to a splendid day that's an uh, AC Cobra a bit different to um, an AC Model 70 the old Invercar you know it's gonna be an okay day when your food is served out of a Renault Estafette a little front wheel drive French van. Uh, they originally had 845cc engines and frankly can barely have moved but as that's a later one I'm guessing it's got a bigger engine than that. Still seems to be in drivable condition. Very nice. Right we're gonna go and watch some racing. Gone now, we'll find out in a minute. Rover V8, I'm guessing. It's a high Hyundai. That's a very hub nut rally car. <laughs> Quicker than an Atos. Oh, Peugeot 205, here we go. Not a T16. But still looks quite rapid. Open the schooner. Oh, Lancia 037 Group B rally car. Metro 6R4. Time for 
Adams and big Healy action. It's a lovely spot here, but here comes a 106. Here comes the Jensen Healy. Jensen Healy powered by a Slant 4 Lotus engine, which they pretty much tested on the Jensen Healy and they weren't very reliable. Renault 8 Gordini. What a splendid day. Now the rain's gone. Low revving. Loads, loads of torque. Yep, Renault 5 Maxi Turbo. Complete with its Citroen Diane indicators. There's a lovely fact for you. Ah, oh, that looks like the um, Toyota Sleeker we featured in Retro Japanese magazine. Um, was a works car in left-hand drive, then converted to right-hand drive to tackle the um, Irish rallies. Right, let's walk around some of the cars that are um, floating about uh, classic nostalgia and um, Subaru SVX is certainly one of the more interesting. Flat six um, engine uh, turbocharged I think and also notable for having, if I can get this working in the right way, uh, restricted drop down glass which you'd often see on, um, hello, on um, concept cars but very rarely in a production car and we've also got a rear wiper on a saloon um, compulsory automatic in the SVX and um, not the best automatic gearbox either um, you can ask John Burgess who um, these days works on classic car weekly he knows many pains about them uh, what else have we got interesting lots of triumphs here and um, I do like triumphs so that's not a bad thing necessarily uh, what we got down this way? Oh yes, I want to go and have a look at this um, Herald Coupe. Got a TR8 Grinnell with its SD1 rear lights and fat, fat arches. This is quite nice. I'm liking the look of that a lot. I'm also liking the look of that Spitfire over there with the sort of um, GT6-esque rear end on it. And I love Triumph 2000 Estates, they are fantastic. So yeah, that's an interesting resto mod. Some suspiciously fat rubber, one wonders what engine is in it. Yeah, very nice. All right, what else can we find down here? Surely not the only club here is Triumph. That would be a bit much. Oh, we've got BMWs, let's go and have a look at BMWs. Oh, there's an, a proper Herald Coupe. Notice you get this slightly fluted design on those. Very stylish.
right beamers. No, not the Z4. Look, we've got an E28. I was quite interested in E28, so I found the wipers quite interesting as a child. But neither that nor the E30 appear to have headlamp wipers. That's a bit of a shame. We can't have everything. A late E30 with a different rear light. Um, that's the fun over here. Mini Mook, Lotus Alan. Look at that for a colourful little shot there with a Morgan in the background as well. And we've got a bit of a Daimler thing going on here, Daimler Lanchester Owners Club. Very nice people. And uh, check this out for colour. Daimler Dart, the SP250. Two and a half litre heavy head V8 designed by Edward Turner, who used to work at BSA, the motorbike people. Uh, BSA was purchased by Daimler and then Daimler was purchased by Jaguar. And then we've also got a nice bus, which I should probably know more about, but I'm not a bus geek. Uh, here we go, it's a Leyland. And um, it has a diesel engine. Serious pride there in its dieselness. Was it Harrington body? Maybe. Oh no, Panorama. So it must be Plaxton. But it, it, it's every boy's dream because you can drive a car into the back of it. Look at that, the ultimate hatchback. There you go. Right, we're going to go up the hill a bit. Trust me to be not recording as one goes off. Bit of a lock up um, into the corner. You can see the skid marks. Well, thankfully the ambulance was not required, but um, the Healy has sadly been quite substantially modified. Uh, bit of a shame. After quite serious crump in the end. Oh yes, the Chevrolet grill badge may give it away. But it's packing um, some Chevrolet power in this uh, Magnum Plus Plus. No wonder it was so quick. Mark II Escort. Exposed Campbell goodness. Right, let's have a mooch around the paddock. Got the Impreza. Got the um, Renault Maxi Turbo, complete with the Citroen Diane indicators. These are off the Citroen Diane, but turned upside down. There's a little nugget for you. Big scoops for cooling the rear-mounted engine. Extraordinary. I think Marku Allen, maybe? Yes, it, it is Marku Allen. You used to drive this as a works car, as I say. We featured that in Retro Japanese magazine. And it driven very well. This is a good thing about uh, Michelle Sue Walsh, is you can get up close and personal with all the cars once you've seen them going up the hill. So there's the Lancia 037. And um, Opel Manta and the Metro 6R4. Splendid. Let's go and see what's about in this section. No, it's not a real one. It's a very good replica. That's 
Asi by to... And it's a Hillman Minx, a very rare version of the Arrows Saloon. Not a hunter. Old Bay engine power. He's hoping for a good time. for the noise, they're all starting up behind me. This is a 1960 BRM P48 driven by Dan Gurney in a period. And you'll see it's got disc brakes where you'd expect them at the front. A tiny, tiny little cockpit. But the interesting bit is at the back. That is the rear brake. It's just bolted to the back of the transmission. A huge disc brake with its own caliper no brakes in the wheels so it reduces unsprung weight improves handling that's uh, quite extraordinary oh, what's making that noise formula one cars that's the car that nigel once all won the championship with that's remarkable special sort of based on an Austin 7 but most Austin 7s didn't have the engine in the back driving the rear axle by chain that's quite extraordinary that's the AC Ace with a red speed engine and a good old river Hold on a minute, I've only just noticed Lancia 037 has a pantograph wiper. That's amazing. I mean obviously it's an amazing rally car, but pantograph wiper action, that's amazing. I'm over the moon with that. Nice to know we're not the only ones in a quality rover. 600. Oh, oh, some people might like this Jensen FF. I guess. For mmm, 600. This has got to be one of the standout cars of classic nostalgia this year. It's a Simca 1500 Estate. And you can wind down the rear window. Look, it's even got a revolving model Simca 1500 Estate inside it. Uh, truly beautiful car. Marvellous. Meanwhile, my Rover is hanging out with Porsches and lovely classic Jaguars and a brand new Jaguar as well. But it's okay because it's got chrome so I fit in 